If you are planning on developing your own property in Dubai, the most crucial step is the first one, which is identifying the right land. In this very special episode of the Dubai Real Estate Podcast, we're going to be discussing all things about identifying the correct land in Dubai, who's selling land, what will it cost you, and so much more. But before we go ahead, if you're watching this on YouTube, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the notification bell to stay updated. Your likes and comments are really appreciated. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcast, please do give us a five-star rating and review. This really helps us getting discovered. And Spotify listeners, please do follow. Now let's cue the music. So here we are at stage one to here, as promised, we're going to be talking about identifying the land yes. in advance of your purchase. Now, could we start please by sharing who are the various people that sell land and who is eligible to buy land? Who sells land? Uh, the master developers sell land. Uh, they could be, uh, you know, various master developers because each master developer is developing a certain community. So depending on where you want to buy land, you approach that master developer to buy land. Now, there are a lot of places where land is already sold out from the master developer then obviously you buy from someone who bought the land from the master developer and reselling like how you would do in case of an apartment or a villa or you know any other development give us some names so i'll give you an example so say for example if you are looking at buying land in dubai hills uh, you would approach imar but if imar is sold out on that particular uh, type of land then obviously you would go out in the open market, in the secondary market, seeing whoever has bought, is he willing to sell? If he's willing to sell, is he willing to sell at a premium? What's the price he's asking? And so mm. forth and so on. Such, I mean, the way you would go and approach for, say, a villa or an apartment in Dubai Hills. Say if it's a ready building, uh, maybe, you know, Imar is sold out. Say, for example, if you want to buy a Maple uh, townhouse or a Sidra, uh, the, the, the most likely Imar is sold out on those properties. So you would go in the secondary market and look for options where people are reselling. Same way, same applies for the land. In the world of retail, uh, sorry, forgive me, in uh, residential investment, yes. it works like that. How does it work in terms of commercial if an investor is looking at offices or otherwise i mean look for any 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 type of land uh, it, it, it's the same if the master developer is sold out on the type of land you're looking at obviously you'll go in the secondary market and look if someone is reselling the land or no yeah and uh, if the master developer has uh, stock if it's a new launch uh, you know something just recently launched uh, then there are chances you could go to the master developer and have a look at uh, options what are available with them as well okay and in terms of buying land and buying a pre-built property or a off-plan property are there any differences in terms of fees and things that you have to pay no raj look the fee and the process of buying the property remains the same okay whether you're buying a commercial property a residential property you know uh, the process remains the same uh, so similarly the fees also there's a four percent land department fee irrespective whether you're buying an apartment you're buying a villa or you're buying just a piece of land that remains exactly the same and the process is also the same but if you were to buy a property uh, which is pre-built yes let's say you spent two million yes. on a piece of land and there was a property there or you spent 1.2 million and there was no property there you'd obviously pay less in DLD fees if you're buying the land. Yes, if you're just buying the land uh, as compared to, you know, uh, a built villa, say, next to that piece of land, obviously the built villa, you're paying a higher price. So whatever the transaction price, you pay 4% on that. So, uh, you know, if you're buying a ready villa, say, for 10 million, obviously you pay 4% on that. But if you're buying a plot next to it, which is selling for 4 million, you'll pay the 4% only on the 4 million. How much of a driver is that for investors when it comes to looking at a saving? Look, uh... It is, it is, it is a small saving, but that's not just the reason why people buy land and build. Okay, you know the advantages are much, much more than the saving. So you've mentioned also then in previous episodes that freehold land became available in two thousand and two. I know it's a short window of data. We're just now approaching two decades, but what has that data shown in terms of the ROI of buying a plot of land and building on it versus some of the ROI opportunities you've had with off-plan and, and pre-built properties? Look, Raj, fundamentally, uh, when you buy land and you build on it, I've always said previously also, it's, you know, it, you when you buy land and you build on it, you're adding value, right? Depending on what you build, you add 
that much more value on it how good you build you know uh, what's the quality and stuff like that uh, so even if you take the data in the last 10 15 20 years uh, obviously people who bought land build on it they've achieved a much better value and a better roi than buying something which is ready any examples so i mean if you talk about you know uh, probably the best uh, communities in dubai such as established communities i would say uh, if you talk about uh, the the higher end uh, communities such as emirates hills for example emirates hills most of the houses are custom built people bought land and built on it today wow. emirates hills uh, you know for our viewers and listeners who don't know it's it's kind of the beverly hills of dubai where you have uh, you know the bigger mansions uh, and uh, the, one of the most expensive houses in dubai and that whole community is you know where people bought land and built uh, obviously the, la- the t- at the time when imar started that master community and uh, started selling land the value at that time and today there's a vast difference you know today houses in emirates hills can go up to 70 80 100 million also so it's 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 something which is uh, you know has added a lot of value the community is established today and uh, definitely the ROI is really, really amazing on that. If an investor is short of time and they're on their way to Dubai and they said to you, Tahir, I'm coming to Dubai for a few days, show me some land or show me an opportunity. What would be the characteristics of that land that would make you suggest that to a potential investor? And could you maybe even share some names of some of those areas as you see them for 2022? Uh, what happens is, uh, you know, when this, uh, for this, uh, understanding the requirement of the investor is very important. Mm. Uh, first and foremost, what's the purpose? Uh, are they buying to make their own house? They want to make a rental portfolio or is it to buy, build and then sell in the future? Yeah. Okay. Along with this, the budget makes a lot of difference because I can show you, show an investor a piece of land for as little as 2 million and uh, going up to 30, 40, 50 million, even 100, 200 million, depending on what they want to build. Uh, so there's, you know, uh, sky is the limit, depending on uh, what they want to make. So uh, obviously, the you know, uh, what they want to build, uh, what's the purpose, what's the budget based on that, obviously, I can give them options. But just to give you an overview, uh, when we talk about the villa segments, uh, villas, uh, plots for individual homes or villas, you can start from as low as two, two and a half million going all the way up to 30, 40, 50 million, depending on how the plot is located, where it's located. Uh, there are a lot of communities such as Jumeirah Park, Nadal Shiba Gardens, Dubai Hills. Uh, there is La Mer, Pearl Jumeirah, Jumeirah Bay, which is one of the most sought after uh, beachfront uh, uh, plots for villas. Uh, you know, so there are, there, there are a lot of options available uh, where you can you know, buy a freehold land and build as per your own needs. In Dubai, uh, this is uh, sorry to correct, but yeah. this is only talking about villas. Same way, if someone's looking at making a building, maybe a small building or mid-sized building as a rental portfolio or as a development project, then there are other options. You know, communities like JVC, JVT, uh, Arjan, Furjan. There are a lot of lot of uh, options where you can actually buy land and build. What about in terms of speaking about Dubai specifically, like closeness to the beach or one of the road networks? Is that is that part of the appeal? Does that form part I of mean, the yes, investment? obviously, look, beachfront, you know, as we all know, you know, people love beachfront. Again, uh, then there are some other communities where it's not a beachfront, but still they're very premium, uh, you know, communities such as Emirates Hills. Emirates Hills is not by the beach, but, you know, it's a golf course community. Same way, Dubai Hills, Jumeirah Golf Estates, you know, the, uh, there's District 1, which has the world's largest man-made lagoon. So there are, every community has some of the other attraction some are located well some are a new community with new features and obviously if it's something by the beach that is something a lot of people also love you're talking about so let's combine the two you were talking about what it is that an investor is looking for and we talked about very specific examples of things that will that could be good for driving up the price or getting a good return on investment what about the value of the brand if you do buy from a developer or a more well-known branded developer does that give the investor a better opportunity when it comes to resale? Look, uh, overall, yes, but uh, what you make on that land makes a lot of difference. Uh, so to give you an example today, if we talk about, say, Dubai Hills. Dubai Hills is a brilliant community by Imar, but people who bought land and built custom-built homes, there the valuation can change a lot in for the same location, same size plot, the big 
driving force is what's built on it. Okay, I can show you two houses next to each other, with the same plot area, same built up area, but one say selling for 15 million dirhams and the next one selling for 25 million dirhams. So that's a huge difference for the same size of house. But why is that difference? Because what they've created on that makes a lot of difference. So, I mean, in general, yes, you know, uh, you're in a good master community. You, as a, as someone who lives over there or owns a property, will enjoy all the benefits of the master community. But more than that, what is built also will define the value of that property. Mm. So uh, to answer that question, yes, master community does make a difference. But when it comes to custom build, what you build on it makes a lot of, you know, difference in adding value to the property. And looking at the market in 2022, 2022 is the second year of living with COVID amongst us, you know, globally, but also yes. in Dubai. A lot of people have purchased in Dubai. You've made a lot of content on your channels about the kind of increase in property prices and the, the opportunity. The world has kind of opened its eyes yes. to living in Dubai. And a lot of people have moved here and a lot of wealth has been transferred here. Is it too late to buy land and build something in Dubai? Because you are still talking about a two to three year time and money investment look raj this question when it comes you know i get this asked very often it's not just about land even for other property in general and my answer to anybody is one thing simple look uh, two things uh, when you say am i late i would say if you know you talk about comparing prices okay maybe two years back okay uh, you should have bought two years back yes you should have bought it two years back but also depends, was there a will to buy two years back? Maybe no. Uh, was there availability of funds? Maybe no. Uh, there are a lot of people who, who probably never thought of moving to Dubai, right? The thoughts come today. Uh, so uh, in, in, in a nutshell, you're not really late, okay? Uh, the main thing is when you're buying, you make sure you know what you're buying, at what price you're buying, and you get a fair value you know, at the time of buying. Because if today you're buying today, you need to see what's the market, you know, in the last six months. If you compare, oh, it was, you know, five years back or 10 years, that way I would say, oh, in 2002, the prices were dirt cheap. Mm. You know, you should have bought then. But then, you know, it's it doesn't work that way. You have to see what's the value today, what the value, uh, what are you looking at uh, making on it. And if you buy, make a right purchase and if you build the correct thing, you're still going to be, you know, making money over a period of time. Mm. You, you've also mentioned as well, you know, just looking at timelines and where we are today, you've obviously, you're a second generation property developer. <coughs> so I'm sure that you've seen a lot over the last few decades. What are the risks? What are the risks in investing right now in land, specifically in Dubai and specifically based on the market that we're in? if you want to build your own property? Look, Raj, uh, one thing is, when we talk about development and developing a property, uh, be it villa, building, whatever sort of property, <coughs> if you plan well, you keep your funds properly ready to build that particular asset. Real estate as an asset class, there can be changes in the market up and down, but if you build it, I would say, I mean, I can't say anything as zero risk, but the risk is minimal because you still own the asset. The asset is not going anywhere. It'll still rent. Okay, the rents can go up or down, but it'll still give you something and still hold value. Mm. Okay, it's not going to become zero. The markets might go down, but it, it, it property doesn't become zero. You know, so, and when you buy land and you're building on it, your risk is, uh, yes, there's a risk by the time you complete, you, you know, you do it properly, but if it's done in a proper manner, in a nice organized manner with proper planning, you're definitely going to make uh, a product which will fetch a much better value. Not only that, you need to understand, even if the markets go down, uh, when you're developing, you need to understand something that, uh, taking an example, say uh, you're buying a piece of land, building on it, and whatever, whether you're buying, say if it's a villa or apartment block or something. So let's take an example that if a similar built product uh, similar built property today, a ready property is selling, say, for 20 million. When you buy land and you're building it, on a rule of thumb, you would be ending up spending somewhere around, say, 14, 15 million. Mm. Okay? Just giving you an example. 
So even if the markets go down, your product, once it's ready, you're not going to lose value on it. Right? Now think of it as this way, that you bought something which was ready at 20 million, and if the markets go down, you start losing from day one. Mm. Right? Here, at least you know that you know the value erosion is not going to happen in that. Because you've bought land, you've built on it, so there is, there, is, there is much more value to be made on it. And if you build it well, even, I'll tell you, there have been some developers, even when, say, I'm giving an example of the last five years when the markets were declining, there were some developers who built sold properties at a f- price, fair price, and the investors made a premium as well. The investors did make a premium on it, and even, and, and you know, no matter what, you know, we talk about the markets were low in 2019, but even at the levels at what they were selling in 2019, they were still at a higher price than they were sold originally. For a simple reason, the product was good, good build quality, good project, you know, uh, made sensibly. So these things make a lot of difference. A good property always holds value. If you're an investor listening to the show right now, you may be wondering which of those risk profiles you fall into. Can you share from your client base, what are the characteristics of an investor who likes to buy land and build versus somebody who wants a ready property? How do both of those investors look at the world? Any, any, any long-term experienced seasoned investor okay, would go in for this. Someone who understands real estate properly would always, always believe in buying land and building. Mm. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, this also is not applicable to everyone because you, know, you need certain amount of investment uh, available to do this. Uh, a retail investor, obviously, you know, someone who's not got the ability or financial capability to invest that much amount, obviously would go in for a smaller apartment. Or so. But uh, the main thing is if someone who really understands and is, is uh, you know, knows the ins and outs of real estate would always believe that this is the best way to go about it. Okay, and just wrapping up, you identified four stages, yes. which I'll read out, which is identify and buy the land, design and plans approval, appointing a contractor, and handover. These are the four stages that you've said are applicable to building your own property. Why is this the first stage, and why is this the stage that you'd like to step in and, and offer value and partner with your clients? Look, when you are buying land, depending on what you're buying for, uh, what your goal is, buying the correct land is also a big decision okay and if you if you buy the correct piece of land it's like you know the battle half won mm. because you've got the right location the right plot within the location at the right value so that's that's like you know uh, a key stage for any project to start there's lots of listings isn't there like where if somebody was to go on their own and start looking for plots of land where yeah. would they go and i know that there has been some issues I can probably say this and maybe you can't, but there have been some issues on listings that are sometimes dubious or they're not, yes. you know, they're maybe not all the way truthful. So where do you step in in terms of qualifying that and where are the sources to find these plots? I mean, land? look, obviously when you go online to any of the listing portals, uh, you can go and find land uh, listings as well. Uh, but again, you know, there's a huge uh, issue that uh, a lot of listings which you see are fake with fake pricings. Uh, so the best part about it is, you know, once you identify which area you want to buy, what I usually do is I tell my clients, I'm going to, you know, I pull out a proper report for the last six months, what's been transacted in that area, at what price, because, uh, you know, transactions uh, are something which you can rely on. Because no matter what someone puts up an ad for that I'm asking this price or whatever, uh, if if the transactions are happening at that price, that's the price basically going on in the market. So that's uh, the best way to go about it. And yeah. also what you, what, what, you need to really understand when you're identifying land that, you know, try and see what options are available in that master community, right? Which also gives you an idea that if there are too many pieces of land, then your chances of negotiation are better. But if you go into a community where, say, probably, okay, there are 100 plots, but out of 100 plots, there are only like seven or eight sellers willing to sell, that means that community is in high demand. So you just hit a stress point right there, which is if I was an investor myself, I would be worried about that negotiation if I was coming in from another city or another yeah. country. Are you, as a advisor, as a as a consultant and as a partner to your clients, will you negotiate on their behalf? Obviously, I will do. You know, look, Raj, when we get into a project, when I say we, me and my team, right, I, I take care of everything, right, from negotiation for the land 
to all the stages and making sure the client gets a completed product so all all the hassles we can take care on behalf of the client and where do you get your opinions from where do you gather your personal information from of course you've got anecdotal I mean, look, stuff we have we have access uh, so i have access to the uh, you know uh, data from the land department what plots get sold and plus when you know when i'm in the market obviously i talk to more people every day on a daily basis i know exactly what's happening uh, which plot got sold what property is selling at what price you know uh, so forth and so on so obviously you know uh, the on ground uh, real time information uh, helps Thanks so much then to here for highlighting the first stage which is identifying and buying the land and explaining why it's so important and what role also you play in it. If somebody is interested now and wants to find out more information with you directly or has some requirements how can they contact you? They could get in touch with me on any of my social media channels uh, on Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn. I'm at Tahir Majithia. If they want to send me an email they could drop me an email on tahir@trustedhomesdubai.com and I'm always happy to help. And there is another three episodes coming up in this season as yes. well, so make sure you subscribe. Yes, absolutely. I would request all our viewers to, if they're watching on YouTube, please do subscribe, give your likes. Your comments are really appreciated. If they're listening to this on Apple Podcast, please do give us a five star rating and review because that really helps us getting discovered. And if you're listening to this on Spotify, please do follow. Thanks to hear. Thanks.